I've been pretty excited about Unison and their progress, especially recently. But let's cut to the chase and deploy something. Currently, I have no project. I have Unison language installed, which I brew installed on a Mac, and Unison account. I one-click sign in with GitHub. That's it. Note that it's a completely empty project. First, we start Unison Codebase Manager by running UCM. The UCM is an interface to the Unison Codebase. Then we type projects to list all the projects and see nothing. We can create a new project with project.createEmpty. Instead of constructing a whole project by hand, we can use some templates. We fetch a few simple examples and require dependency with pull, Unison Cloud Start releases latest. Right after it pulls everything, we can deploy a Hello World project. We run examples Hello World deploy, and then we wait for deployment. Just a couple of seconds. Okay, maybe one or two more, and it's done. And open one of these URLs with the name as a path parameter, for example, slash Joseph. And we say greeted, hello Joseph. That's it, it took us less than a minute or two to deploy. For those who are not convinced or those who want to see the hello capitalized and with a comma, we can edit the logic really quickly. We edit examples hello world logic. Let's jump over these details for now and just modify the logic in the scratch.u file, named this way because it's meant to be thrown away. I'm going to open this generated scratch file in VS Code. And note that I don't have anything else interesting in this project directory or workspace. The services logic is a function that accepts an HTTP request and returns an HTTP response. To modify this request, we change the last line, the text that we return. Capitalize, add a comma, add more emojis, whatever. Because UCM is listening for changes in the current file, when we save it, Unison parses and type checks it. As UCM suggests, we can update the definition, the hello world logic, using update. If we redeploy again with run examples hello world, deploy a bit faster this time, and check the response, we get an updated text. Capitalize with a comma. Okay, so we saw that the services logic is a regular function, but what about the deployment? Clearly all the complexity hides in there. Hold on to your socks, folks, because deploy is just a function too. If we view examples hello world deploy, we can see its implementation. This function deploys an HTTP service with hello world logic we just saw while we just sit there and enjoy. Only functions? Yes, there are no YAML files, no packaging, no containers, or anything like that. You call a function to deploy a service. Unison takes care of the dependencies, caching on the server, and so on. Deployment takes seconds. So how is it even possible? You might have noticed that unusual URLs and plain hashes associated with the service during both deployments. The default service URLs are based on the service hash. This hash is a hash of the service implementation. In other words, Unison takes the source code of the service with its metadata and makes a unique identifier out of it. A hash identifies a service and the service is immutable. When we change the logic, we don't modify the service. Instead, we deploy a new one and we get a new hash based on the service's implementation. Actually, we can also draw it the other way around. The hash or identifier points to a specific snapshot of the service's implementation. This concept, content addressing, is a cornerstone for Unison, and it applies to any piece of code. The Unison code is identified by its content and not by its location, like we would typically think about code. So let's unroll it. With a typical programming language, when you write some code, you modify some text on a specific line in a specific file. This is not the case with Unison. Unison code does not even live in a text-based file. We can still modify it using the text editor, as we've seen, but we have to pass this code to the tool such as UCM that does the actual changes. Let's look at an example. Given a function increment from natural number to a natural number, which takes a number and increments it by one, Unison parses it as a syntax tree and then hashes it and stores it in the database. The human readable names such as increment and plus is a metadata that does not affect the function's hash and is stored separately. Because it's so important, let's look at another example. Let's try to define a new type that represents a box that optionally has a value, something known as option or maybe in other languages, which consists of two variants, emptiness, which represents a lack of value, and exists, which wraps a value of any type. And this structural means that the type defined with the same structure or shape are identical. When we save this scratch file, the UCM tells us that the definition already exists and is also named libbase optional. If we check the implementation of the hashes, we can see that we just have different names for the same type. It's pretty fun, but it's not just about fun. 
It also comes with benefits. Having content addressed code brings tons of other benefits and changes the way we work. It starts with simple niceties such as instant renames, because it's just a metadata change in a database, not a complicated semantic analysis that has to be done when you refactor a name with mainstream tooling. It also means no builds and no test reruns. Unison needs to hash your function just once. If you don't change the implementation, it doesn't need to redo anything. Furthermore, it knows that there is no need to rerun the tests, no dependency hell, no version conflict. If you have two different versions of a function brought by dependencies, it means that you have two different functions and you can either unify the usage or keep using two functions and so on. It shines the most when it comes to distributed programming. Unison is designed with distributed computing in mind. We can move computations from one location to another and the receiver either has all the hashes already and can perform the computation, or it has to request and sync the missing dependencies, which then will be cached. Unison handles serialization and deserialization of data, which makes it easier to send data over the network. Let's talk about that in detail. You can call other services and storages as smoothly as local functions. No need to convert the data from and to JSON, protobuf, or whatever. Let's just try it out. This time, let's view it in UI. Examples, multi-service deploy demonstrates a multi-service deployment and usage. We start by deploying two services. The first one takes a natural number and returns it incremented by one, and the second decrements it by one. We use the deploy functions to deploy a service, which takes an environment along with a function of the shape A to B with some abilities, don't worry about these abilities for now, and returns a service hash AB, where A is the input type, of the service and B is the output type. Then we create the edge service, which is going to be a public facing gateway service that speaks HTTP, deals with the real world and delegates to the two type services we just defined. Note that we deploy the service with deploy HTTP, not generic deploy, because its input type is HTTP request and output type is HTTP response. We use call name to call other Unison service, which takes a service name and an input. For instance, the first route takes a natural number, delegates to a different service using call name, and then converts the result, a natural number, to a text to display to the user. Let's deploy and take a look. As you can see, we deployed not just one service this time, but multiple service, but only one gateway for interaction. Incrementing a number by one, incremented by one and decremented by one, decremented by one. There should be nothing surprising. If we try to change the code to pass an argument of the wrong type, for example, a string instead of a natural number, it won't type check. The unison knows that the second argument to call name has a type text, but it expected natural number. We don't have to deal with serialization code and we can never send the wrong blob of data to a service. So let's do a quick recap. In Unison world, deployment is done with a function call. Calling another service is a function call. Accessing storage is a function call. And a function call is a function call just for completeness. And we're not going to look at the example of using a type durable storage in this tutorial. The real fun is to try it yourself, not going to take all the fun away from you. Unison is already out there. Unison Cloud is either in public beta already or shortly there, depending on when you're watching this. See the attached links and ask around. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to a future with no YAMLs, packaging, containers, version conflicts, JSON shuffling. Well, probably the last one is still unavoidable. You still have to talk to the outside world, but still less of all of that and more coding sounds like a good deal to me. Now, the only thing that's left is to figure out how to replace meetings with Unison.